Hey, what's up guys? So today we are finally getting around to testing some ITX hardware for X570 and the new Ryzen CPUs. This is of particular interest to me because I'm really excited about how far we can push the envelope for small form factor computing and 12 cores in an ITX system is exactly that. So today we're checking out the Aorus X570i Pro Wi-Fi and we're going to see how well it handles the new 12 core 3900X, both at stock and when overclocked. So over the last couple of weeks, testing the 3900X, I've definitely had a fair share of enthusiast X570 motherboards at my disposal, including the Aorus Extreme, the MSI Godlike, and also MSI's Creation. For those wanting a smaller package though, X570 ITX boards are here, and you shouldn't be afraid to run the 12 core 3900X at full blast here either. I've expressed how surprised I am regarding the 3900X's power efficiency over the last couple of weeks, and that means that the motherboard VRM and cooling requirements don't need to be as significant. All right, so first things first, a quick look at the board before we dive into the technical stuff. So it's a pretty neutral colorway here, no colors here at all, nice plain gray, which we always like. And there is also some RGB towards the backside, towards the right of the board, which is becoming pretty common these days. An IO shield is pre-installed. We do have a thick armor for the PCB at the back and the VRM heatsink is kind of mediocre, if I'm honest, lacking a true fin stack. The rear IO is a bit of a weird choice here, most notably the three display outputs from the CPU, two HDMI and one display port. So if you wanted to run a triple display setup with a Ryzen APU like the 3400G, that is oddly possible here. USB seems okay, we do get a Gen 2 Type-C port, and unfortunately no clear CMOS button back here, which is kind of a bit of a shame. That is kind of accessible though on the PCB, it's in a hard to reach spot on the board in the form of a two pin header. The chip set and primary M.2 drive are cooled by a very small fan attached to a metal cover and I was actually surprised to see this improve M.2 drive thermals by a significant amount. Running at a quick read and write benchmark, the peak temperature was reduced by 20 degrees C by having the fan run at 3800 RPM compared to 0 RPM and I didn't observe noise to be that bad either. Since the drive wasn't throttling though, the read and write speeds didn't see any change between running the fan on or off, however you may see that change once you put the board inside a case. There is a second M.2 drive on the back of the board as well, so if you do put a drive there it will get pretty hot, but it's a lot better than not having an extra slot there in my opinion. The VRM configuration is pretty solid here, we're running a 6 plus 2 phase VRM with 70 amp power stages. The layout is pretty standard, which is a good thing, and Gigabyte haven't tried to do anything tricky with doubling phases or doubling the components for example, they're using a solid 8 phase controller and they're giving us a solid 8 phases. To be honest though, this isn't a significant upgrade from X470 or even B450, where for example on the B450i Gaming Plus from MSI, we also saw a 6 plus 2 phase VRM with 60 amp power stages, so not really a significant upgrade from that. In terms of overclocking though, I was able to push the 3900X up to a stable 4.4 gigahertz on all cores with a load V core of 1.38 volts. That was with the latest BIOS available, which had the 1.0.3 AB Agisa update. Out of the box though, in a multi-threaded workload like Blender, the Aorus X570i will settle the 3900X between 4150 and 4200 MHz depending on the CPU temperature. That's with everything set to stock, just loading optimized defaults in BIOS and setting XMP. This is roughly what I've seen with other boards as well with the latest Agisa update. V-Core out of the box, that is how much voltage is being fed to the CPU, settles at around 1.3 volts under a heavy extended workload with sufficient cooling. This board, just as with every other X570 board that I've had a chance to test, seems to want to run the idle voltage at 1.5 volts. Now, say what you will about background tasks and the observer effect, but I really don't understand why AMD think that the new CPUs actually require 1.5 volts whilst executing extremely light workloads. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. We can also analyze the amount of V-droop here, that is how much voltage is being dropped from baseline to load. It's around 100 millivolts out of the box, which is quite a lot, but that can be corrected to just 36 millivolts by setting the LLC mode to high in the BIOS or completely eliminated by setting it to 
to turbo. That should correct any instability that you get with heavy overclocking should you encounter it. VRM thermals were actually really solid, although I will mention that they were getting a decent amount of airflow on the open test bench from the radiator mounted right next to it. With the 3900X at stock, the V-Core VRM settles at just 44 degrees C, and when running full tilt with our overclock, we do see that rise to about 50. In a closed case with less airflow, you'd probably see these values about 10 to 20 degrees warmer, but that's still well within a safe range. Another thing that I wanted to quickly test was running Acetec's new 92mm AIO on this board with the 12-core 3900X, seeing as many of you will be looking to do small form factor builds with this particular board. So CPU thermals on an open test bench were within a safe range, but again, expect something a bit warmer once you start putting this inside a case. Undervolting the 3900X would be recommended with this cooler. You can check out my recent video on that as well. I did also try lowering the LLC mode to the lowest setting, which was called standard, but that didn't reduce the V-Core at all or help the temperatures. So for heavy workloads, expect to do some manual tuning to get things running nice and cool, especially if your ambient temperature is warmer than 20 degrees C. So the Aorus X570i is on sale for 220 US dollars, which is definitely on the pricey end. You are paying for a decent premium for the thicker PCB and the active cooling, and most of all, PCI Express 4.0. If those are features that you don't need and you just want to experience the joy of the 12 core 3900X in an ITX form factor, I'm pretty confident at this point to also recommend B450i boards as well, at least those that also have a six phase V-Core VRM like the B450i Gaming Plus and the B450i Strix. I'm also very keen to check out the X570i Strix as that board does have a couple more power stages from what we can see, but I'm questioning at this point whether any of that is really necessary, even for the 12 core. I'd love to know your thoughts and comments down below whether you'd perhaps stick to B450 for Ryzen 3000 or spend the extra $70 to $100 for X570. As always, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next one.